Hello, today I will be synthesizing paratoluene sulfonic acid. Toluene sulfonic acid is a very strong organic acid that is a solid at room temperature. It is also non-oxidizing. It is often used as a strong acid catalyst in organic reactions. The procedure of the preparation of this compound I got from the passage, the preparation of paratoluene sulfonic acid, section 476 in the book Experimental Organic Chemistry by James F. Norris. This procedure called for the direct sulfonation of toluene using concentrated sulfuric acid. 50 grams of lab-grade toluene was added to a round-bottom flask. To this flask, 50 milliliters of concentrated 98% sulfuric acid was also added. The acid was added slowly to ensure that the temperature did not rise. Two distinct layers formed. After the addition of all the acid, the flask was placed on a hot water bath and, with heavy stirring, was reflexed for about six hours. After the reflux, I allowed the homogeneous mixture to sit overnight on low heat with heavy stirring. A mass of white crystals appeared on the sides of the flask. These crystals proved to be pretty challenging to remove. In the end, I opted to reheat the entire solution up again in the hot water bath. While the crystals were dissolving, I filled a beaker with 150 milliliters of concentrated hydrochloric acid. I forgot to turn on the camera after this step of the procedure, but I then poured the flask into the hydrochloric acid. Upon addition, crystals of toluene sulfonic acid immediately crystallized. The flask was then washed with small increments of hydrochloric acid. I placed the beaker into a lab freezer to allow more crystals to precipitate. The whole beaker solidified into a big mess of crystals. I then opted to vacuum filter this. However, because there are strong acids present, regular filter paper cannot be used. Normally, to filter strong acids, one uses sintered glass funnels. However, I do not have a sintered glass funnel, so I opted to use these strips of fiberglass. I layered the strips over the Buchan funnel as best I could, but still the filtration was slow and sloppy. Some product was undoubtedly lost during this filtration. Because the filtration went so bad, I opted to refilter again on regular filter paper to remove the extra acid in water. I then took the powder and placed it on a plastic weigh boat. This ended up being a huge mistake because the acid began to dissolve the plastic. As you can see, the weigh boat is now stained yellow from the acid. The procedure then calls for the product to be placed in a desiccator over sulfuric acid. I let my product sit in the desiccator undisturbed for one week. I will fathom that most of the water was removed during this one week in the desiccator. After removing from the desiccator, I prepared the product for storage. The total weight of the powder was 47.8 grams which represents a 47% yield. This yield is slightly lower than that predicted by the textbook. I attribute most of it due to mechanical losses when I was filtering over fiberglass and during transfer into apparatuses. I probably could have increased my yields by allowing the solution to reflux for longer. Because both sulfuric acid and toluene are cheap, I'm not too concerned about the yield. I now have enough toluene sulfonic acid to use in future experiments. I will now attempt to explain the mechanism be behind the sulfonation of toluene. So toluene, when it's sulfonated, can go into paratoluene sulfonic acid or ortho toluene sulfonic acid, and that's because the toluene is an ortho and para 
sorry, I'm sorry, the methyl on the toluene is an ortho or para activating group. Now the actual mechanism is as follows. All sulfuric acid has some sulfur trioxide in it. And it, it exists in equilibrium. So what actually happens here is that the toluene ejects one of its electrons out of the double bond. And when it does this, it forms a carbocation, which is, uh, I can draw, terrible density. So here we have a positive charge of hydrogen. Okay. So now where is this electron going? Well this is going to the sulfur trioxide forming All of the following intermediates exist in this reaction, but one of them here is special, and that's this one right here. And the reason why it's so special is because of this positive charge. And this pos positive charge here is centered on this tertiary carbon right here. So you get what's called a tertiary carbocation, which makes this one the most stable of all the forms. So this form is primarily going to exist, but for the sake of argument, we'll do the following, the reaction with this intermediate right here. So what will happen now is we have this negatively charged oxygen. It's gonna come in here, do an attack on the hydrogen, and this bond here will then collapse inward, restore an aromaticity, and what you'd be left with is the acid and you gain aromaticity with the toluene. And there you have it, p-toluene sulfonic acid. Also, one more thing about toluene sulfonic acid. It's important to remember that the ortho toluene sulfonic acid is not really present because the fact of steric hindrance and that this really bulky SOH does not want to go into the C, you know, H3 group and does not want to be right next to it. So that's why it, the primary product is the para product.